Hey guys, this is chapter 2 of our free online course for Muse Beginners. In this chapter, we're going to talk about master pages. So if you're familiar with other programs like InDesign, you might know or you might understand how master pages work. If not, don't worry, we'll explain it in this chapter. So uh, going back to chapter 1, we created, we had a master page and we created the breakpoints in this master page. So in master pages, the way it works is you're supposed to place here all the shared elements from your website, the shared elements of all the pages um, from your website. As an example, I'm going to show Responsive Muse website and usually uh, all the elements from the header and the footer are the, the common elements, the shared elements. So as you see here, we have the logo and we have all the menu up here and it's divided from the rest with like a white bar so if you scroll down i'll go down to the footer and you can see we have the logo we have the search bar and also we have some icons here so i'm just going to go to another page let's go to our widget library and you'll see that we have the same menu up here and the same footer and it will be exactly the same in most of the pages. So what I'm going to do in the master page is you have to organize how the design is going to look and what be clever here. So what elements are going to be common? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to create I'm going to design a simple website and um, this common elements will be all the elements from the the header and the footer. So that's what I'm going to do. So you see guys here we have the same header and the same footer. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's go back to Muse. And this is the file. So you can actually create more than one master page, but as this course is basic, so it's first of all, I would start with uh, just one master page because you can actually apply uh, different master pages to different pages. Like if you have five master, I mean, if you have five pages in your website, you can apply um, A master to two pages and B master to the rest of the pages. Master pages, what will do is help you save time because if you don't use them, then you'll you have to place and make responsive every single logo and menu from all your pages. Okay, so this helps you to save time. So that's why I stress the importance of master pages. Okay, so remember in chapter one, what we did is I opened the master page and I created, um, sorry, I created the three, the, the, sorry, not the three, the, the breakpoints. So another thing that I'm going to do before going into the master page, you'll understand later why, is I'm going to open the first page, which I named home, and I'm going to create the same breakpoints here. So first is, if you don't remember, it was in the breakpoint of 1000 pixels, 768 and 480. So you also have to create the breakpoints, not only in the master page, but in the, in the pages you're going to work with. And you might think, ah, oh, this is going to take a lot of time, I have so many pages. But there's a little trick, and this is going to save you lots of time. So I can close actually the home page. Right now I have a home page, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Sorry. I'm going to right click, right click, and I'm going to select duplicate page. So this is a home copy, and Mm, this website is going to have three pages, including the home page. I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to right click and duplicate page. So if I go in, I can see that I have duplicated the page with the breakpoints. If you've had other elements inside here, you would duplicate the, the exactly the same page with the same elements. So this is just to save time. Okay, remember? 
what you have to do is right click and duplicate page. I'm going to name this as rename it about us and contact. These are my three pages. Okay, let's move on to our master page. Okay, so Okay. Can you if you guys have noticed, we have here like these blue arrows up and down. What does this mean? So what it does is like you're going to you're marking the the size of the header. And down here you're also marking the size of the footer. So whatever's inside is going to be the body, but when you you place the elements like for example I'm going to place a logo over here and and I'm also going to place the menu over here. So what I'm going to just going to mark it so whatever whatever element whatever content is always going to be below this mark and the footer above this mark over here. It's just to so the design is a bit you know it's similar in every single page and not the distance between the the content below the footer from the home page and the about us page is different it's just to make everything similar okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the footer you can actually you can manually do it i'm sure i'm going to do it i'm going to move it here until 100 pixels and about the footer i'm going to drag it down I want something big. Let's say, yeah, 730. If you can't do it here exactly, well, actually, it's pretty pretty easy. But wait, okay, that's it. So this means that this is gonna be my header and this is gonna be my footer. Okay, so next thing that I'm gonna do is, mm, 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 okay. I'm going to create the the logo first thing and I'm going to place the first element into the the header. So logo what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the logo just with text. You can also use a rectangle tool and fill it in with a with a jpeg, png or svg, but in this case what I'm going to do is just use text a font. So I'm going to name it coworking and this is going to be the font. Going to bring it up a little bit to not that much. Okay, let's say 36. And now I'm going to place it. over here. Okay, so um, another recommendation is that whenever you start designing, think about the colors you're going to use. Don't improvise, just think about the, the swatches you're going to use, a color palette. So I've had this prepared over here, and these are my swatches. I'm just going to drag them here, because I like having them close to me. So these are basically the colors that I'm going to use on this website. So I want the text to be, sorry, I want this text to use this color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out the the menu widget. I'm going to use a widget that you can find in your widget library inside Adobe Muse. It's a built-in widget, so you don't have to purchase any third party. So just open the widget library and go to menu. We're going to bring out the horizontal menu. So what I'm going to do is just drag it out. Remember that I've just created uh, three pages called Home, About Us, and Contact. Okay, so you just see that what I did is I just dragged the widget and 
it recognizes all the pages. That's why I wanted to create the, the, the pages before and show you how to do it because this widget is just clever enough to just drag it and it will recognize the pages. So it means that you don't have to type every single section. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, you can edit this, customize it, but we're going to talk about that in future chapters. So what I'm going to show now is what is important to is layers, the layer panel. Working with layers is very important because you can see sometimes how one element overlays other and suddenly you can't find it and that's because you're not using your layers panel correctly. So here in the master pages, I really, really, I strongly recommend you to create three layers. First layer, which is this one over here, um, call it header. Then add another layer and call it body. And it, you can actually move around, just click on it and drag it down. And right click again. Right click and add a third layer, which is going to be the footer. And bring it down. I'm going to bring it down because Heather is on top, body is in the middle, and footer is below. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to leave the, 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 the Heather elements inside the Heather layer. Body is going to be empty because we're going to use this structure in the other pages too. That's the way to organize your, your work. And now in footer, I'm going to get all the elements from the footer inside this layer. So easiest part is just selecting it and then start creating them. Others that you can actually move around and drag the elements from one to another. Okay. So back to the footer, what I'm going to do, this is my section, my footer section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle. And good thing about Muse is that whenever you uh, create a rectangle from side to side, it sets it directly to stretch to browsers width, which is what I wanted exactly. So I'm going up here to fill and I'm going to use this color as a future background. Then what other future elements? Just make sure the rectangles here. So what other future elements I'm going to use? So normally what I have, what I place is social icons and I also place um, a small contact form. So I have this prepared in my library and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag it to show you the elements but I'm going to explain you how to do this in, in future, future chapters. So this is my footer. Okay, so I have a small contact form, which is another widget that you can find in the widget library. I have my icons here and designed by Responsive Muse. So this is another part of the footer element and just make sure, go back to layers and make sure you can find it inside the footer, the footer layer. Okay, so in next chapter, we're going to talk about navigation menu and how to get a mobile menu, how you can customize all this menu. So before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to, to place all these elements in the different breakpoints, except for the menu. So if you see something funny, don't worry about it because we're going to talk about it next chapter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the logo, this contact form and all the footer elements here will look good in a different breakpoint. So I'm going down to the 1200 breakpoint. And as I can see here, don't worry about this menu. If you want and if it's a bit disturbing, just move it a little bit. But here I can tell that it's moved a little bit and it's not centered. So I'm just going to center it a little bit. And then make sure go to the rest of the breakpoints. So this, I'm just going to do it fast and quick and just remember 
we're going to cover everything you feel you've missed something we're going to cover everything in other in future chapters and as you can see i'm only moving around the this contact form as uh, the logo is perfectly placed actually and remember don't mind about this and just place it here and over here so we have a bit of a problem here I'm just gonna fix this quick which is just making this a bit smaller so you guys see it's just a fast edit and we're done yep like that my swatches are <laughs> overlaying all the design here so no the swatches just i like to have it here with all my colors so it's for me easily easy and fast to to select so you don't actually have to follow this recommendation over here okay so we've got the master pages our common elements are placed so hope you guys like the tutorial thank you guys for watching